Hi, I'm Mary Poplin from Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be going over tracking marker removal, specifically complex tracking marker removals. Now, I'm going to show you some before and afters here. This is the before. This footage is from one of our users, and he was having trouble on our forums, so he sent us this footage and gave us permission to make a tutorial out of it. Now you can see here that the boat is originally covered in orange tape, and then at the second shot, it is not covered in orange tape. So, how did we do that? Well, that's what this tutorial is about. So let's get started. Whenever I start a remove project, the first thing I do is I make sure my settings are all correct as to my final project, and then I start tracking background elements. So let's just look at this shot right quick to see what we're going to have to track. So I'm going to start by drawing an X-spline around the side of the boat, and you'll notice I'm avoiding the window, where animation is, and I'm avoiding reflections, okay? Reflections throw off Mocha's planar tracker because reflections are essentially portraying data that is located somewhere else in the shot. It may look like it is on the plane you're trying to track, but it isn't. Another thing you'll hear me talk about a lot is layer management. All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to name my layer properly. I'm going to name it Side of the Boat Track because it's important to keep track of those sorts of things. I'm going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective, and I'm going to use my minimum percent of pixels track to 82 and track forward. Now that should lock right onto the side of my boat, but if I want to see what my track is doing, one of the things I can do to see what the track looks like is I can adjust my surface tool, which is this blue square, to line up with the side of this window. I then turn the grid on, and as I track, I can see what my track is doing. I like to do this when I'm tracking because it tells me whether or not my track is correct. If my track is off, everything else in my shot will be off. All right, now we're going to start tracking the bow of the boat. So I'm going to try to grab as much of this top plane of the boat as I can. Now that's going to be kind of difficult because of the amount of data I have for the top, which is not a lot. But I'm still going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective and see what I get. It actually doesn't look too bad to me. So when my track starts to go off, what I tend to do is I tend to move my spline around until it catches the data again. And then I can track forwards and backwards to get a better track. As you can see, I just deleted points here mid-track to get a better track. Don't be afraid to change points, add points, delete points, move shapes, whatever you need to do to get that track. The tracking data does not follow the shape. Alright, so I'm going to start to speed this up just because... At this point, you know that we're going to have to track all of the backgrounds in order to get a lovely remove on this shot. So I'm going to draw my shape around the front of this boat and track backwards. Now, I'm tracking from the areas of most detail to the areas of least detail. Now, I'm going to track the side of the boat and do the same thing. I'm just going to track and roto for the sides of the boat as I go, which usually I would say is a no-no, but on very simple shapes, it's completely fine. I'm also going to roto the top of this boat but one of the cool things I'm going to use is I'm going to rotate the top of this boat using the Join Layers tool. Now, the Join Layers tool is this tool up here that looks like this vampire smile or ladybug head, whatever you want to call it. But what it does is it turns your cursor into a hook that hooks points together along your roto edges so that your seams always end up looking nice. Now, this is very important for removes. The reason it's important for removes is because removes need really precise roto on edges where planes meet in order to get very good results. To that end, I'm just going to come in here and adjust my roto along the edges of this highlight on the edge of the boat and just make sure my roto looks really nice. So what I like to do is I like to scrub a little bit back and forth and see if my shapes are moving correctly. Once I'm confident that my roto looks nice, I move on to other roto shapes. So I'm going to finish tracking the top of this boat here and let's show you what happens when your layer order is out of order. And you see I get this pop-up that says one or more selections was not tracked properly. That's because my top of the boat track layer was under my big roto shape for the top of this boat. Okay? So, if I want to fix the roto for that part of the boat, I need to fix the track before I fix the roto. Otherwise, I'm just fighting the track. Alright, so moving on, I'm going to do some nice roto for the front of this boat using the track that I already made for the front. We're just going to align this shape really nicely and do the same thing for the other side of the boat. Now I'm going to need to make an inside shape for this boat's window as well, and I need to make sure that my layers are all in the right order. But once everything's in the right order, it's really easy to start linking my roto shapes to tracks. Now, when I say that you arrange shapes in the right order, that's a user-defined set of parameters. Mocha doesn't do that for you. But what you as the user need to do is you need to take your 
objects or your layers that are closest to the camera lens and put them at the top of your layer pile and ones that are further from the camera lens, that's objects in the background, need to go at the bottom of your layer pile. All right, so I'm going to continue to rotoscope here and I'm going to use the join layers tool and I'm going to also turn off these thumbnails because they're bugging me. Now, the join layers tool makes it to where I can attach two layers together. So you can see here that I've just very quickly attached this top of the boat plane to the side and the front of the boat. And since I didn't like the way that top plane was looking, I went ahead and retracted that as well. Like I said before, some things are just better if you track and rotor them. It's an advanced tracking technique, and I recommend that you track base shapes first and then learn to track and rotor. Both are skills that you need in your skill set. And don't be afraid to change the tracking parameters while you're tracking. All right, I have another tool I want to show you, and that is the add points tool. It looks like a little arrow with plus signs next to it. And you use this when you don't have enough points in your roto shape in order to get the right shape. So it doesn't matter where you add them, Mocha will interpolate them throughout the rest of the shot. You can always add and remove shapes as you're rotoscoping. Obviously if you add points that you need later on in the shot and then go back to the beginning of the shot and delete them, you're going to have some problems. But just think logically about it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up this roto. I'm just going to adjust my points and make sure everything looks correct. Once all my tracking in roto is complete, it's a simple matter to just pull in some mats that I made for these orange X's, and I'll show you how to do that right now. First, I take my X-Blind tool, and I go ahead and draw a shape anywhere on the frame. I then make sure I name it properly so that I know it's a mat, and I go to Layer Properties and go to Mat Clip. I go to Import in my Mat Clips, and then I choose the Mat Clip that I have already made. I just made a JPEG compressed black and white QuickTime movie. And then I go ahead and let that load, and then I hit import, okay? Now, uh, it'll tell me that the clip must be converted to an 8-bit, and I just hit OK. It's pretty much that simple. And now you can see I have my black and white mats represented here in red, and I can adjust their opacity as they are overlaid in the shot by adjusting the values next to the paint bucket. All right, so I'm just going to turn these off and on for a little bit so I can make sure that all of my orange squares are covered, and then we're going to move on to making clean plates in Photoshop. All right, so moving into Photoshop, I'm just going to load this up and load up a uh, freeze frame of frame 125. Now, I'm using 125 because it's the last frame. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a marquee selection tool around the edge of this, and then I'm just going to come in here and use my clone tool to replace the texture where the orange tracking marker is. I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the boat, and I'm going to speed this up because I assume that you know how to use Photoshop. Basically it's Alt to take a sample and then, you know, you just click to paste it in. And very quickly I have a cleaned up boat. Now I'm also going to do this on frame one. The reason I'm going to do this on frame one is because I'd like to be able to interpolate between the first frame and the last frame in order to get the best results for this boat remove. Now, the reason for that is that there's a whole lot of angle and zoom change between the first frame and the last frame of this shot. All right, I'm going to worry about those background orange dots later. So right now I'm going to go back to Mocha and we're going to load in our clean plates. So I click on the remove tab under clean plate. I hit import. Now I select both of my clean plates and I make sure that I put them back in at the exact frames I took them from, in this case 1 and 25. I'm going to check use clean plates exclusively because what that does is that doesn't pull from the rest of the shot to replace them. I'm also going to use illumination modeling. I'm going to use linear because it is the most computationally least expensive. We're just going to render forward and see what we get. I feel like that looks good enough to take into After Effects, where we're going to incorporate our old plate and our new clean plate. As usual in After Effects, it's very important that we set up our file with the exact same settings that we had in Mocha when we started creating our clean plate. Now I'm loading in my original plate and I'm loading in my masks. My masks are a little hard edged, so I'm going to do a box blur on them to make them a little softer. Box blur is cheap computationally, so that's why I like to use it. And I'm using this to composite in my remove plate with my original plate, okay? That's because Mocha's remove does not render with soft edges. So if I need soft edges to composite my paint back in, 
I use masks and another compositing program. Now the second problem we need to address is these orange X's inside the boat. Now Mocha can't remove those because there's two different planar sets of data going over them, right? So there's the windows and then there's the back. So we're going to use a color key to knock these down to the same color as the wood of the boat. So I'm just going to color key mask out these X's by using a tolerance of about 15 and just continuing to color key out the pieces. Now I'm not going to worry about pulling his skin tone when I do this because I'm going to make some garbage mats in Mocha that will fix that right up. So I'm just going to finish color keying and what I do is I basically just duplicate the effect until I get my results. And then I'm just going to generate a fill right over the top of that. Just a white fill so that I can use a Luma key later. And then I'm going to go over to Mocha Pro so that I can make my garbage mats. Obviously it doesn't have to be Mocha Pro to make mats. You can make mats for After Effects in Mocha for After Effects. But I'm spoiled. Alright, so I'm just quickly going to come in here and I am going to turn everything off in my old file. And I'm going to click on my X blinds and I'm just going to draw a little shape around my square. If you can't ever see your shape, it's because you have overlays off. I'm just going to turn this back on and then adjust my shape and just do some very quick garbage roto inside of Mocha. I'm going to call this orange one because naming is important. And it looks like we're just going to have to like hand garbage mat this because the foreground dots are actually going to get in the way of Mocha tracking. That's what happens when you try to track two planes at once in Mocha, which is why I always tell you select one plane at a time. Now, we're just going to move in here and do the same thing for the second orange cross. And we're just going to quickly garbage roto that out. Obviously, my whole video has been sped up. It will take you a little longer than you're seeing here on the screen in order to get these sorts of results. I do that so that you guys don't have to sit through an hour and a half worth of demo to get 20 minutes worth of information. Once my garbage mats are done, I simply go to export shape data and then I click on all visible layers, copy to clipboard, and I go over to After Effects. Now back over in After Effects, I'm just going to go ahead and pre-compose this layer. I do this because in After Effects, once again, you always have to make sure your settings between Mocha and your composite match. Sometimes leaving layers unnested causes problems with an After Effects when I try to apply Mocha data to the top of that. Another really good trick is pasting your shapes on a solid and using that as an alpha or luma map. So once again, I'm going to go back over to Mocha just to show you what I'm doing. Export shape data, copy to clipboard, okay, all visible layers, and I'm going to go back to After Effects. I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask, making sure I'm on the first frame of my comp, okay? And now you can see I have my little X's completely masked out. I'm just going to check through my comp right quick and see how they look. I'm probably going to end up having to apply a little bit of a blur to them to make them not so grainy, but let's see how this looks so far. So I think what these shapes need is a little bit of fall off, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and animate a little opacity fall off very quickly, just from right there and right there, otherwise it will freeze the shape for the rest of the shot because there's no more data. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start color correcting these little squares down, okay? I'm going to put the background plate underneath so that I can see what I'm matching to. So I'm going to go to Effect, Color Correction, and I'm going to move down to mm, Levels. And then in Levels, I'm going to start taking the value of this orange down while sort of flattening out the saturation. I'm then going to go to Color Correction. I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. And I'm going to take some of this orange out of these colors and adjust the hue to be more like the background color. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a little bit of a box blur just to sort of even this out and make it not quite look so grainy. Because like I thought earlier, it does need some blur in order to knock it down a little bit. All right, you get the idea. The main point is that I'm trying to show you how to paint without painting. All right. So let's see how this all looks. You'll have to excuse my refresh rate. I'm working on a laptop. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to match the grain of the original plate in the clean plate that I've created in Mocha. Because Mocha doesn't have its own graining tools 
you need to use a compositing program in order to do that sort of thing. That is why I suggest people composite in their Mocha Remove plate into their original plate. Luckily, After Effects' Match Grain tool works pretty well for this. Alright, I'm going to fix one more thing in Mocha. I'm not really happy with the remove that I got on the rails of the boat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get, you know, some more garbage shapes for the X's that are on this railing. And then I'm going to use a really simple trick to sort of move two plates under one another in order to replace data. So I'm just going to go ahead and track backwards on this. And this is, you know, lazy garbage matting at its finest. I'm going to go ahead and track forward as well. Like, and again, I've sped this up, you know, in order to not bore you guys to tears. Um, and then I'm just going to clip off the layer and name it. I'm going to do the same thing for the right shape over here. I'm just going to draw some X-splines around it. And we're going to track forwards and backwards. All right, tracking backwards and tracking forwards. And I'm going to basically stop when my data gets bad, and I'm going to clip that off as well. All right, so now I've got my two garbage shapes, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the roto on them because I want them to be right there on the edge of the boat using the Uber key. And then I'm going to go back over to After Effects, make a new layer, and I'm going to go ahead and use it as a lighten layer so that I can see where my squares are lining up and see where my edges are lining up. And then what I'm going to do is remember earlier how I said that we would just make a solid and we would paste our Mocha data in on that solid? That's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to use that as a alpha mat for this layer. If I tried to paste my shapes onto this layer with them being off like this, I would get bad results. So let's just adjust my roto just a little bit more. And let's copy this to the clipboard and go back to After Effects. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, as usual, make sure that we're on the first frame. I'm going to use the normal blending mode on that layer. I'm going to just pre-compose it right quick because it helps me keep track of my layers. And I'm just going to make a new solid. I'm just going to go to Layer, New Solid. And I'm going to make a white solid. I'm just going to go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask. And now I have my Mocha Masks on here. I'm going to use that as a Luma Mat for these edges. And you can see that I've pretty nicely replaced my data. Okay. Now, I'm going to adjust my mask properties a little bit. I'm going to add some feathering. And let's see how that looks. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the edges of my boat now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pre-compose the whole thing and I'm going to call this my green screen plate. So I'm going to say pull green screen from this plate. And at this point, I now have a final green screen with all of the orange tape cleaned up that somebody can now move further down the pipeline in order to finish their shot. And that about wraps it up. All right, thanks for watching a Mocha Pro tutorial. You can find us on Facebook if you have any questions or on Twitter. The footage was courtesy of one of our lovely users. And this has been Complex Tracking Marker Removal with Mary Poplin. Thank you and have a great day.